So CDA is the receptor that's co-expressed on the, the cytotoxic T cell. So CDA is helping this connection, so the TCR and the MHC1. So it's just like helping them to um, stick together. Like a bridge. Like a bridge, exactly, yeah. So it's more specific to the cytotoxic T cell. So the B cell, they also have like a naive B cell, just like a T cell, but their like a main purpose is a little bit different from the T cell. So many they do is like secrete the antibody. So they use the antibody as their um, weapon to attack the abnormal cell with like a pathogen. So they can be activated by two directions. So they can be activated directly by the antigen. So they have the BCR, so B cell, receptor on their surface, so they, if they attach to the antigen, and they will be activated, and they will start to differentiate or um, kind of like a replicate their cell. Or they can be activated by the T helper cell. So the T helper cell were doing something like presenting the antigen to the naive B cell and promote them to be active. So that's two passive explanations. The one is like they can independent to the T cell, but the majority is this pathway. So the B cell will attach to the T helper cell. And this T helper cell is already activated by the antigen presenting cell or the uh, abnormal cell. So they will just indirectly present that antigen to the B cell and activate them. And that is the most common pathway. So once they activate, they will differentiate two different cells. So the one is called the plasma cell. The plasma cell is the major one to secrete the antibody. Another cell is called the memory cell. So it's the memory B cell. The function for memory B cell is similar to the memory T cell. It's just for waiting for the next attack. So here's the summary. So they come from the same naive B cell and usually they would just function to make the antibody and this is just for waiting for the next attack. So here's an overview that what antibody is really doing. So actually the antibody, they will try to help in other immune cell and kind of like trigger those immune cell and tell them you, to, you have to work harder, you need to release more cytokine and causing like a local inflammation there. Um, they also have the ability to kind of like moderate or modulate the overactive immune cell. So it's just a really depends on what kind of receptor is expressed on those specific immune cell, and they have the different function. Of course, the most uh, important thing is like the, the antibody they were directly binding to. Um, I will show you that later, but I will just show you uh, the structure of the antibody. So the structure of the antibody, there's a heavy chain. So this longer one is called heavy chain. and have the shorter one called the uh, light chain. And you can see there's a label at the C or the B. So the C is more like a conserved region. So almost all the antibodies that have the similar sequence. So we say it's more conserved. Um, on the tip of the, this is more variant. So remember yesterday we were talking about like a rearranged uh, transcription. So you can have the same gene and they can just rearrange and creating multiple different actyl or like a regular size. Remember that slide? So you can create the different variety of the antibody with the B cell or T cell. So that's what well, depends on what you're going to look like on the B region there. Okay, so back to what the antibody doing. So this slide is just showing three things. The first thing is they're going to neutralize either bacteria or the um, toxic protein. So they will just bind to those and neutralize those pathogen or toxic protein. So once they're surrounding, they cannot attack your cell or interact with your normal cell. So that's a neutralize. Another thing is they can like, um, like wipe it up and they can trigger more uh, intocytosis by your uh, microphage or something like neutrophil. 
So the immune cells will more like interact with those cells targeted by the antibody. So that's the second thing. And the third thing is they will trigger the complement system. So we only have a really brief um, lecture about the complement system. So complement system is mainly another like a non-specific, but they are triggered by the antibody. And then once the complement system happened, they were just drawing a hole on the target and causing the target to death. So there are three functions of the antibody neutralize, increase the intracytosis, or they will trigger the complement system. So those antibodies are recognized by the P cell of the bacteria. So most of the time it's like a membrane protein. So think about that on the membrane of the bacteria, they have their uh, specific like protein. It's like foreign protein. So those antibodies will directly attack or attach to those protein on the membrane surface of the bacteria. Oh, I mean, instead of attaching to what? So like the bacteria wants to attach to so you antibody, yeah. antibody prevents bacterial adherence. Adherence to what? To the cell. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cell? Yeah. Okay. To your normal cell. Gotcha. Yeah. So kind of just like clothes. Exactly. Something like they just wrap in them and they cannot do anything and they will just clean up that out thing. Yes. Yeah. So here's just another summary about like three action. So neutralize and increase the um, increase the uh, like the microphage endocytosis or activate the complement system. So there's just a slide say, do not need to know, but I will just go through it. So there's five kinds of antibody. You have IgG and ADE. So five kinds of antibody, and probably you just need to know most of like the bond antibodies called IgG. That's a most abundant in your body. And the IgM is like the largest antibody. It doesn't mean like the size of the antibody is large, but it means the antibody, they will attach together and form something, something like called, uh, I think it's like four, five antibody. So their FC region will just attach together. So they will form something look like this. So it's like a really huge like complex of the antibody. So the benefit of this is they can attach to multiple places. And they will form in like a really large particle in the body and they will get attention of your immune cell to attack that. So that's the IgM. So IgM is like a, they form in like a, the complex, the giant complex. So IgA, the IgA is mostly present in the milk. So that's the antibody the mother can give to the infant by using this go through the milk and GI and into the circulation of the infant. So that's the IgA. And the IgD is mostly present in the immature B cell. And the IgE is expressed in the mast cell and the basal fill. And the IgE is mostly response to the parasite infection. So if you have the parasite infection, doctor probably just take your uh, blood first and just measure the title of the Ig in the blood. So it's like an indicate index for uh, telling how you got the infection of the parasite in the blood. So it's just a different antibody have different function. And that's another slide just telling you their function. So uh, do not need to know. Again, just FYI. Okay. So here's more like um, how your immune system responds to the infection or responds to uh, the pathogen or the virus. <clears throat> so here is the initial expose. So pretty much if you have the uh, exposed to the pathogen or virus, you will start to trigger the interferon. Interferon is more specific to the virus. And then you will trigger the peak of the NK cell. So it's still like non-specific. And the virus title will going up, 
But before they go down, you will start to trigger the specific immune system. So remember, you have non-specific and specific. So non-specific is always triggered first, and the non uh, the specific one will trigger second. So here we we'll start the T cell will coming out. So CTL, T cell cell. And then later after T cell, you will start have the antibody. So that's mean your B cell is active. So you can see from the first exposure, you start with the non-specific immune system. You start with your specific immune system, start from T cell and B cell. And eventually the virus titer will go down. So the question now is like, if you have the second exposure, if you got those pathogen again in your body, and actually in the second time, you will see your specific immune system will boost faster than the first time. It's similar, it just happened at the same time of the non-specific immune system. And you can see the response is much larger than the first time. So that's the function of the memory cell. So memory T cell or memory B cell. So they have the larger response and faster response at the second stage. So this slide just show you again if you draw it together. You can see the virus titer the first time is small. No, this is virus titer. Yes. The first time is larger and broader. That means virus have more replicate and virus just lasting longer in your body. But if you have the second exposure because the non uh, the specific immune system trigger and they can kind of limit the size of the virus in the body. Um, does this relate to what we talked about yesterday, the, like the T cells, is like there might be one that kind of finds that specific and then if that if it happens once, it just create a lot of memory cells? Exactly. And the memory cell just sit there and yeah. wait for the second response. Exactly. <laughs> So let's talk about like immunity. <coughs> so this was like the ability to com combat the disease with the cancer with ab abnormal cell. So when we talk about this, you always know you will take like a flu shot every year so they can prevent you to get a flu in the rest of the year. So that's kind of like taking the vaccine. And that's about the immunity. And there's two, ki two kind of immunity. There's an active and a passive immunity. So the active one is more like um, your body responds to the pathogen or responds to the uh, foreign peptide protein. Something is not belong to your body. So the active means they recognize those and they trigger the following uh, specific immune system. So start from the innate T cell, innate B cell, and they have the memory T cell and memory B cell. So that's the active immunity. So you have a lot of the memory, either T or B cell in your body, and that response for the second exposure. So that's called the active immunity. Of course, it's long lasting. So here's another something similar to what you see earlier. If you have the first exposure, you have the small, um, take longer response. But if you have the second exposure, you have the big and fast response in your immune system. So what is the passive immunity? So the passive just means they bypass all your immune system like a recognition. So the passive is really directly, they just give you the antibody. So they just inject or you just like take the antibody from either like a milk. Uh, so infant, they take a milk from the mother and they got the IgA. So that's a part of like a passive immunity because those IgA in the infant they can directly use for the exposure to the pathogen. Another thing is like um, there is some like autoimmune disease. They kind of inject the artificial in the body to block your um, uh, the thing trigger the autoimmune disease. So they directly inject the body into the body. So that's called the passive immunity. So the difference is just like, do you really trigger your whole immune system or not? Active and passive. Does that make sense? And of course this one, because you didn't trigger the memory cell. 
so it won't last in longer than the active immunity. Was that related to like specific versus non-specific? So I think most of uh, either this when we're talking about the passive or active, it's all specific immune response. So specific immune response include B cell and T cell reaction. Non-specific is more like macrophage, neutrophil, complement system, interferon, and K cell. So most of the time when you're talking about this, it's related to the antibody. Yeah. Okay. So there's a last part is the lymph system. So you have the different like a lymph system in your organ, and we'll just start to separate them in like a first and secondary lymph system. So you have the lymph node. It's like really well known, and it's all like a distributed in your whole body. Um, you have a larger lymph node in like at the end of your limb, so like here, here, where your um, your feet. So just make sure they can kind of like filter all the pathogen from. If you have a cut on your hand, they don't want those pathogens to get into your central body, like abdomen, heart, lung, like vital organ. So that's why you have a lot of like a lymph node at the edge of your. Uh, limb. And you have the bone marrow. We talk about this. This is a site where you start to produce the blood cell. So red blood cell, white blood cell, it's all start from here. And you have the thymus. We talk about this. It's the site for T cell to get mature. You have the spleen. Spleen is somewhere you store most of your uh, red blood cell. And of course, your immune cell will sit there and wait for the response. And that's another lymph node, so it's a lymphatic tissue, it's around on your face, so it's kind of like a major protecting from the infection from your mouth, your nose, your respiratory system, directly attack, attack on your brain. So there's a lot of like a lymph system with lymph node on your side of your face, around it. So just protecting your brain. So we talk about the lymphatic system. When we talk about the cardiovascular system, so we have like a vein, we have the artery, and we have the capillary system. So actually you have the lymphatic system just next to, directly next to your, uh, the capillary circulation. So we mentioned that in the cardiovascular class, so the lymphatic system, they have a really important thing is reuptake your tissue fluid. So if they don't do this, I will show you the disease later. You just have a giant leak in your limb because the tissue fluid was just stuck inside the limb. They don't come back to your circulation system. So there's something more important of the lymphatic system. So one thing is you will form something called the lymph node. So it's like a giant structure, and there's a lot of like immune cells stay inside there. So you can think about this. If there's a pathogen, just go through your circulation system, and they are filtered out from your capillary, and they are picking up at your lymphatic system. And the pathogen, they will just go through this, and they reach at the lymph node. And you need, and all your immune cell is just waiting there. Something like there's a check, and all the people need to go through that, and there's a security which is like checking, saying, oh, this one is good, this one is bad. So all the immune cell is just waiting there to check in all the things going to go back to your uh, venous system. So go back to the bed. The second is like an infected system, they have, they have the valve. So they're similar to the vent. So remember the vent, they have the valve to pre prevent like a backflow. So the infected system, they also have that structure. So they have the vent of the valve here and here. So like prevent the backflow. So that's that's two like uh, most important thing about the structure of your lymphatic system. And there's another thing we're just showing the same thing. So they're just like surrounding your capillary bed. So they're ready to uptake all the tissue fluid. So once they uptake, they will return those fluid to your vena cava and directly go back to the circulation system. Uh, there's a last. Thing in 
important for the infective system when you start to learn about digestion system. So lymphatic system, they have the route for uptake the fatty, the fatty acid or triglyceride. So once your GI system absorb the fat, they directly go into the lymphatic system, but not the venous system. So probably we'll mention again your digestion. Maybe next month, I don't know. Um, so that's the disease I'm just talking about. If your lymphatic system has the trouble, you cannot reuptake the fluid from your limb back to your venous cava, you will start having swelling of your limb and forming something like this, like alpha. So that's a disease of uh, the part of like, if you have failure of your lymphatic system, you will see this symptom. Okay, so following slide, we'll just go over for each um, I talk about like bone marrow, spleen, lymph nodes. So the following slide was just more detail on there. Uh, so ben, the bone marrow is where they start from: red blood cell, white blood cell. Um, the bone marrow in the children is more active, so they look more red, just because they have more circulation, like a blood circulation inside there. Uh, it will start to um, become white when you get a doubt because you don't need that much immune system development when you're uh, red blood cell perfusion. So that's where they start from. And usually the T cell, they will move in away from the bone marrow before they got mature, but the B cell will just sit inside there and wait to become mature. So where's T cell going? T cell go to thymus gland. So thymus gland is around in your neck and in the children, they have a larger thymus because they need to develop more T cell at their early stage of life. Um, in adult, they start to shrinking because you don't need that much development of the T cell later. So the size of the thymus is decreasing when you're getting old. And the T cell will sit there and waiting to get mature. So they will just sit there and wait. Another one I just mentioned, the lymph node. So the lymph node is like a <coughs> spatial structure in your lymphatic system. And a lot of the immune cell will stay inside there. There's a B cell, there's a T cell, there's a microphage. So they will just sit there and wait to find the pathogen coming back. And they're mostly, com I just like to mention, it's like a, at the age of your limb, your, your neck, so like a critical spot in your body to filter the pathogen. So mention the spleen. The spleen is not just store your blood inside there, but they also store the immune cell inside there. Spleen have the really, if you see the spleen before, what's the color of the spleen? It's purplish red. It's like a dip, a really dip red, right? That's mean they have a lot of blood in there. So the circulation of the, the blood circulation in the spleen is pretty active. So they have the immune cell inside there just doing something what they do in the lymph node. So they were just waiting something coming and we will pick them up. And of course they store the blood inside there. Oh, that's pretty much. <laughs> So, <laughs> any question? That's pretty fast. Um, any question you want me to go back, or any question you have for like a previous class, I can clarify. Yes. Um, when you're talking about mineralization, conservation of the complement system. The complement system. Uh, can you tell me which lecture is like? Here. Yeah. So what you want? I just didn't like. I was writing down the very last. You were saying. Okay. So just overall complement system, right? Yeah. That's all you need to know. Um, so you can see there's a different protein, it's a complement protein, so it's like this. And they will form the polymer directly on the membrane. 
and trolling the hole on the membrane, and they will start causing the leaking. Okay. Are, the, are those proteins produced by the antibodies? No, that's not the antibody. That's just called complement system. Yeah. Something else I can clarify. Everyone just wanted to go for lunch. <laughs> yeah, you're free to go. I will stay here. Um